Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and today we're going to be doing an int introduction to state space representation of dynamic systems. Okay, so what we're going to do in this short video is look at two questions. Why and what? We're also going to do uh, just a little bit of simulation. Really that's just to see a practical application of this state space representation business. Okay, um, so why? Well, actually, why don't we start with what first? So let's do the what part first. Um, let's say that you have a dynamic system that has it was described by a, a couple differential equations. So here's one in theta. It actually has theta triple dot, a theta double dot, a theta, and let's say it has an input tau 1, some kind of a torque. And then we have another dynamic system that is described by these equations. And it has an input tau 2. So we have um, a little bit of coupling between these two dynamic systems. Uh, primarily in this equation, it has the theta uh, variable in it. So we have this thing, and, and oftentimes we want to solve it or come up with a uh, simulation of it. And in state variable form, what we do is, is we transform this set of two differential equations, this one being third order, and this one being second order, right? It has three derivatives up here, so it's third order. This one's second order because it has two derivatives. And we're going to transform those into a system of first order differential equations that has this form. x dot equals ax plus bu. And I'm using a single underbar for a, a vector and a double underbar to denote a matrix. We call this equation the state equation. And in state variable form, we also generate another equation that on the right-hand side really has the identical form of the state equation, except we use the matrices C and D. And this one is called the output equation. So the act of converting this differential equation, or set of differential equations, into state variable form is really just the act of determining four things. The matrices A, B, C, and D. Of course, to get there, there are a few extra steps. We have to do things like um, define what the inputs are, or identify what they are. In this particular example, the inputs were tau 1 and tau 2. Normally this is dictated by the, the physical structure of the system that you're working with. We also have to identify or define what the outputs are. Right? And the inputs, by the way, we typically denote those as u. So you know, here's where the inputs uh, enter into the, the state equation and the output equation. The outputs are typically denoted as y, and we haven't really said what they are in this case. Maybe a reasonable output would be a theta, uh, maybe a theta dot, and perhaps an alpha. There's three outputs. I don't know. Again, it depends on what it is you're doing with that analysis. And we typically denote those with y. The biggest thing that you have to do is you have to come up with a definition of the states. And in these equations, the states are denoted as x. And I'm not going to say what they are in this particular example because we haven't defined them yet. We'll actually do that um, in a short example in just a minute and then in a more detailed example in another uh, video. Okay, so again, what it is, is converting, it's a representation of a dynamic system in first order form, first order because they have a single dot there. And um, it is defined in terms of inputs, outputs, and these things called states. So now let's look at why we would do such a thing. Uh, 
And just as a, a reminder, I'm just going to rewrite this. And I would highly recommend that you just get in the habit of writing this out whenever you're dealing with um, state space analysis of design. Okay, um, again, first order set of differential equations. Um, why do we do this? Well, there's really an analysis advantage. Right in the previous slide, the previous page, we had two sort of high order differential equations. One was third order and one was second order. When we get it into this form, what we actually end up with, and just as a reminder, we were third order in theta, we were second order in alpha, and what we'll end up with here, if we convert this into state space form, is an x dot that has that's a five by one vector. Okay, so we end up with five of these first order differential equations. So there's a certain conservation of, of order here. Um, you know, third order plus second order, so there's five. We're not going to increase or decrease that order by going to state space form. However, it gives us a nice clean representation, an A, B, and a C, and a D matrix. And what that allows us to do is use all kinds of results from linear algebra to analyze this system. So for instance, we can analyze its stability incredibly easily um, just by looking at the A matrix and performing some operations on it. Um, we can also get information about the characteristic response of the system. And uh, what I mean by that is, or I should say an example of that is, things like um, determining its eigenvalues, or if you are familiar with the Laplace domain representation of a dynamic system, um, finding the poles of this dynamic system simply by looking and doing some operations on it in this uh, matrix form. Um, we can also do control system design. Very effectively. Now, a couple words on that. So if you've had a course in automatic controls, typically what you did is you looked at single input, single output systems. So we call those CISO. So it's single input, single in, single out. Okay. Um, now, in the previous, in the example on the previous page, I had two inputs, a tau one and a tau two. We had three outputs: a theta, a theta dot, and an alpha. It was definitely not single input, single output. We call those types of systems multiple input, multiple output. Now, if you had that course in automatic controls, or you've done some um, design of single input, single output control systems, it's not too bad to do. Um, but extending that to multiple input, multiple output can be very tedious um, using you know, typical methods, block diagrams, and that sort of thing. But when we put it in the state space form, again, we can utilize all of these wonderful uh, uh, tools from linear algebra to do the MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, control system design. And then finally, one more thing is simulation or, um, you know, numerical solution. Now, on the previous page, we were third order in theta, second order in alpha, a couple differential equations and couple. Um, Solving those is, for linear systems, is possible, um, perhaps depending on you know what we're doing with it. Um, uh, but numerical solution really requires you to put it into this first order form, this state space form, whether the system of equations is linear or nonlinear. So it gives us a, a great way to um, uh, a great leg up on doing simulations. So that being said. Let's just do a little example of that. Um, let's see, what I'll do is do a, just an incredibly simple um, system. We'll just take this one, and maybe I'll title this as a simulation example. What I'll do 
is I'm going to take a, a second order differential equation in theta. There's an input five tau, okay? Beautiful second order differential equation in theta. The input is tau. And um, if you do have a background in, in uh, the Laplace domain, you know, you could come up with a transfer function of this. So capital theta of s over capital tau of s is equal to five over s squared plus three s plus five, or 13, I'm sorry. And, you know, you could analyze the heck out of this thing. You could look at its poles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you could put it into a tool like Simulink as a transfer function, give it a, some type of an input, a step input, and get a response. Or we could put it into state variable form. And if we, I'll just run through how we would do that in this uh, simple example. We'll have two states. And I'm going to define those two states as x1 and x2. And x1 will be theta, and x2 is theta dot. Now, I'm just defining those. It turns out there's an infinite number of ways to represent this system in state variable form. By defining the states this way, I've sort of vectored myself in a unique representation. Um, but that's one of the disturbing features for people just learning state variable or state space representation is that there's no one correct answer. There's an infinite number of them. Um, now remember, in state variable form, remember I, I did say it's handy to write this down a bunch of times. What we're really looking for is x dot as a function of x and the input u. Now in our case, our input is, is tau. I shouldn't have done that. It's not a vector. It's just a thing that I wanted to point to. And our states are defined over here, x1 and x2. But what I need is x dot. So I'm just going to say x1 dot x2 dot equals equals x1 dot is equal to theta dot and if I want to put it in terms of x that's x2 and x2 dot is theta double dot and that is nowhere to be seen in our state variable definitions however I can get it straight from this equation specifically it's negative 3 theta dot minus 13 theta and plus 5, and instead of tau, I'll just call it u. And so that's negative 3. Theta dot is x2. And theta is x1. And again, we have this input. Basically done. I can write my state equation. Um, the way I like to do that is I just kind of hog out some space on the page for my A matrix hog out some space for my b. Turns out it's just a vector. And then I start filling in the, the blanks, so to speak. So for that first row, I get it from this x1 dot equation, and all that's in it is an x2, and there's no input. For the second equation, it's a negative 13, a negative 3, and a 5. So there's my state variable, my uh, state equation. Again, don't worry too much about the details of how I did this. We'll have that in gory detail in another video. Really, I just want to get to a state variable form and then simulate the stinker. Um, let's say that my output for this example is theta. So I'm going to say my y is equal to, again, I hog out some space for my C matrix. Because remember, y is equal to cx plus du. So I hog out some space for my c, and I hog out just a wee bit of space for my d. Since my output is theta, theta is really just x1, so I pick up a 1 there, a 0 there, and a 0 there. I'm, I'm done. I have my a, my b, my c, and my d matrix. And so now it's just a matter of putting it into some sort of simulation tool. So let's go ahead and do that. So you'll see some things kind of blinking around a bit on the screen as I switch over to... Um, actually, I don't even need the, that. I can just go straight to Simulink and 
I'm just going to say file new model. And over here in the palette of different blocks, I'm going to go over to continuous. And you notice that um, there is a state space block right here. So I'll just drag and drop that in with a left click. Might be a little bit hard to see in, in uh, uh, with the resolution here, but um, we'll just keep going forward. Um, so now I just put in my A, B, C, and D matrix. So let's see, my A is 0, 1, semicolon, negative 13, space, negative 3. And my B matrix is, what was my B matrix? 0, 5. Whoops. Um, 0, 5. And my C matrix was 1, 0. And my D matrix was just a very lonely 0. Now, initial conditions. I have two states, and so I need to specify two initial conditions. Uh, I'll just go 0, 0. And I'm done. And let's force feed this one, some sort of an input. I'll go to sources. How about a step input? So I'm going to put a step in tau. And if I double click on step, uh, the step is going to start at time equal 1, has an initial value of 0, and a final value of 1. Mm, it's fine. And let's put it to an output or a sync in the MATLAB terminology. Now let's use a scope. And I can even label this as um, x, my state vector x. So it's actually going to have two uh, traces in it. Now I'll go up here to my um, configuration of the simulation. And I'll change a couple things. Start time is 0, start, stop time is 10. Um, I'll use a fixed solver, ODE3 is fine, and I'll use 100 hertz, 0 0.01. And we hit the green button, it dings, double click this, and whoops, oh I'm sorry, I said that there would be two traces, actually there's not, because we only had one uh, output, it was theta, and look at that. Your basic second order response is overshoot, is settling time, all these interesting time domain characteristics. It starts at one second and away it goes. If I wanted to see both states, I can easily do that by going into the C matrix and changing it to um, 1, 0. That'll pick up the first state. 0, 1 will pick up the second state. And then over here, I'll need to add another um, 0 to my D matrix. So with that simple change, I can rerun it. And now I have this. My yellow is theta, and my pink is theta dot, or the speed. So as we see theta going to a constant value, of course, the speed is going to zero. That would be a lot harder to get with a transfer function. With a transfer function, we could have gotten the yellow one, no problem. But the pink one, we would have had to jump through an extra hoop or two. Um, and just to see that, we can go over here to continuous and grab a transfer function. And I'm going to put into it the transfer function that I wrote down at the beginning of this example. I think it was 5 over uh, 1, 3, and 13. And I'm going to drag this same input into it. Go back here. I'm going to grab um, just another scope, I guess. And I can just right click this and drag it to make a copy. And here I'm going to call this one x, but from a transfer function. Run it, bling, bing, whatever. And there's our output from the transfer function. I'm going to try to make it about the same size as this one. Uh, actually, that's kind of cheesy, but um, you get the idea. A much better way to, to convince ourselves, whoops, that the two yellow traces are the same because they don't look at it here because the scales are all different, is to do something really simple here. I'm just going to take a math operation and grab an add block and make one of these. So I double clicked on it, but I'll make one of these a minus. And I'll grab this one. 
stretch this out a wee bit. Maybe we need to just clean stuff up a tad. Put this one up there. One more scope. And guess what I have now? I have the error between my state space representation of that dynamic system and a transfer function representation. Run that. And, oh, of course, I did pick up both the yellow and the pink states. So if I wanted to go back to the, um, the single output case that, that I had down on the paper, or I should say on the um, slide, it would look like that. Oops. What have I done wrong? Ah. So this would be 1, 0. There we go. And run that. Look at my error. It's beautiful. It's zero. So this is just to illustrate that that transfer function representation and the state space representation are the same thing. We got a little bit of numerical um, uh, jitter in there, a little bit of noise, but that's just an artifact of, of how those two different how those two systems were solved slightly differently numerically. So that's it. Quick intro to uh, state space. We covered uh, what they are. You take a bunch of differential equations of potentially high order and represent them as first order differential equations, making sure that you identify what the inputs are, what the outputs are, and define some states. We looked at why we do this. Um, it has to do with efficient analysis using linear algebra tools, efficient control design for MIMO systems, multiple input, multiple output. And then finally, we looked at one of the, the big aspects, one of the more important aspects of why, and that is easy numerical simulation. Thanks.